All right, so here's something that is just amazing. San Francisco has decriminalized petty theft up to $950. So if you steal up to $950 worth of goods, you will not be prosecuted. Okay, first off, that is insane. So you own your own little business, and the government of San Francisco just told you that if 10 people come by and steal $950 worth of goods from your store, you're just out almost $10,000. Sorry, you're just going to have to eat that cost because the government doesn't care. They're not going to hold the guilty accountable. They're not going to try and get the items back for you. You're just on your own. Now, real quick, I honestly don't see how San Francisco survives this. Who in the hell is ever going to open a business there ever again? Who's going to open up a chain in San Francisco when the government is telling you that you can be stolen from and they're okay with that? The thieves can just take what they want and the police won't do a thing. Oh, and you still need to pay a huge chunk of change in taxes to fund that police force so they can stand there and watch the thief just take your stuff. This is precisely how you destroy a city and an economy. And in a way, it's unfortunate for sure, but but good for them, because let's just see how this socialistic policy works out. Because it's going to end in disaster, and we can just add that to the massive pile of socialistic failures. Now, I said socialistic for, for a reason, because of this wonderful socialist Twitter account you see here. Um, I've seen them around for a long time. I actually follow them. I like to see what they have to say about things, and they're not a small-time account. They've got up to they've got over 30,000 followers actually. So anyway, what's their take on this? Well, they say, quote, "If you need it, take it without having to hand over any money. That's how smart, efficient economy should function. That's how real socialism will function. This only seems shocking now because money-obsessed capitalism and its everything-must-be-paid-for rule still exists. So, I engaged with this account because that is quite the take, I must say. I say that age-old rule that as prices lower, quantity demanded goes up. If you lower prices to essentially zero and everything is free, there is no functional upper limit to demand. Hell, this video itself of this person taking all this stuff is proof right there in front of their faces. You're seeing an economic law play out as a microcosm in front of your own very eyes, and yet they're blind to it. This person taking this stuff knows that essentially what they're taking is free, up to $950 worth. They don't have to give any regard to respecting the property rights of the business. It's all free for the taking. Well, when they left, I saw an empty shelf there. They didn't seem to be holding back and taking stuff, and it also didn't seem that they were only taking what they needed, as this and plenty of other socialists have always claimed would happen. I do not know what planet they live on. I really do believe there is something wrong in the mind of a socialist, and there is this incapability of thinking through the implications of things. And it's always nice to have these conversations to remind me of that. I usually end up saying to myself, holy crap, you really are untethered from reality. And here's another problem with this. Remember at the beginning of COVID when people were hysterical and shelves were empty? Well, across the nation, those shelves were filled up filled up again pretty quickly. There was a lot of incentive to get those shelves filled back up, and they very often were. What incentive is there to fill these shelves back up in this store that you're looking at right now? What compensation will occur for those people who produced, distributed, transported, packaged, tested for quality, etc., etc.? There's a lot of people involved in the production process before it ends up on a shelf. Why would they want to fill these shelves again? I don't think that that person that's taking this stuff is too concerned with compensating anyone. They just recognize the price is functionally zero, so let's just stuff a bag as full as I can get it and go. In fact, I'm going to stuff it so much that I have trouble riding away on my bike. Now do this for an entire economy. People who might otherwise not want to take too much, people with a good conscience who don't want to take so much as to leave the shelves bare, they may end up doing this anyway because they have to. Now why do they have to? Because they know that the price is essentially zero, which means any person like this can come in and take however much they want, and the shelves will far more often than not be bare. And so if they ever do happen to walk in and see a full shelf, that might be the only opportunity they have to get what they need in store, and so they're going to overconsume and overtake because of that uncertainty. So in a way, I just said that they would overconsume. That's actually technically not really right because they're not really overconsuming. 
they would be taking just what they need and it just so happens that what they need is all of it because again they have no idea if they'll get this opportunity again because all it takes is one person to wipe out a shelf like this so to prepare for that common occurrence in their socialist society you could have a normal everyday person wanting to respect the needs of others still hoarding and taking entire shelves because they have no idea if anything is going to show up on that shelf again and if it ever does it'll probably be gone by the time they get there now my last point and this is where the authoritarianism comes at comes out with socialists who oddly enough can't stop saying that they don't want any form of, of authoritarianism at one point in here they say that capitalism makes people want useless things now okay i had a couple questions for them after they said this which despite the fact that they did they did respond to me afterwards they did not address the questions i posed at all and i think i know why they either don't know or they do know and they are aware that this would require authoritarianism on a massive scale those questions are of course what is considered as useless and who decides what is useless and how do people prevent others from making things that are deemed useless and furthermore what do you do with the people insisting on producing or consuming or owning these supposed useless items i don't see how you do this without some organization i think we call it government dictating nearly everything about production and consumption they'll control it all as that's how it always ends up whenever these absurd utopian ideas are given a shot the silence i got from this account on this question tells you a lot about them the grandiose and fantastical claims that they made with no explanation of how they won't crash and burn that also tells you a lot about them if you ever need a reminder about how socialists really are untethered from reality just peruse through their twitter accounts it'll remind you very very quickly but anyway that is all for now like subscribe comment please share this video it's hugely helpful and appreciated and take it easy